Hello again, this is Grant Ellis, aka PFC Amy Grant, from Reddit and Twitter, and I'm going to continue my series of seven parts on preparing the Forge of the Fire Giants. I hope that this walkthrough of my preparation for this segment of my campaign is helpful and beneficial to new dungeon masters. And part two is about the sandbox situation. My campaign exists as a sandbox. And what I mean by that is that the players choose where the players are going to go and what they're going to do, and their choices have impact on the campaign world and also impacts me as a dungeon master in regards to what I need to prepare for the adventure session. Each adventure starts with the players in a set location. To simplify things, let's think about it as the rule of threes from filmmaking. The rule of threes comes from my background in filmmaking, where each shot is impacted by the shot that came before it and the shot that comes after it. How did my players end up in the current location that they are starting the adventure at? Were there any adventure hooks that led them here? Were there any encounters that led them here? What led them to being in this location? For example, my characters began this segment at Noanar's Hold. They ended up at Noanar's Hold because they were traveling there from Tribor, and they had harnesses to deliver from the Lion Shield Coster in Tribor, and they were to deliver them to the keep within the town. There was information that the players had that led them to make that decision. Likewise, my players had three adventure hooks that were leading them to the city of Everland. They had a number of letters of recommendation and tokens to deliver to the half-orc bartender at the inn within Everland. We can think about the events that happen beyond Noenar Hold as the shots that come after the current focus. Currently, we are in Noenar, and we have several options in front of us. We have the adventure hooks that lead us to Everland, but the party has also met Harshnag the Grim, a key story NPC of the entire campaign setting that desires to bring the player characters to the Eye of the Allfather, essentially the Temple of the Giants, which is far to the west and far to the north, near the spine of the world. The players can choose to go to Everland and follow those adventure hooks, or they can join Harshnag now and continue to the west. If they go to the west, they will begin to undergo a different series of adventures than if they continue northward. Given the fact that my players had three adventure hooks leading them to Everland and only one new hook with Harshnag, and not even the entire party was hooked into him due to split party sessions, they decided to proceed to go to Everland. After meeting their point of contact in Everland, the players were taken to Moongleam Tower, which contained a series of teleportation circles that could lead them to one of five different locations in the Savage Frontier. I had to make sure that I had an encounter planned and prepped based on the location where they would go if they chose to take advantage of these teleportation circles. Now, the players had existing hooks and threads to follow within their current region. It's important to discuss how when players arrive in new locations, be they urban locations, wilderness locations, underground, or extra planar locations, they will often be following existing threads, but could very likely pick up new ones. It's important to identify the new threads that they can find in a location, as well as remember and recollect the current threads that they are following. Part of the reason I knew I would eventually have to end up prepping the Forge of the Fire Giants is there was a good chance my players would eventually follow through to Citadel Felbar, where they would deliver a letter of recommendation to the king and queen of the dwarves who live there. Now, after delivering the letter of recommendation, if they continue to investigate Citadel Felbar, the story will present itself with an opportunity for a great reward if they can overcome a great risk. The dwarves that live there are going to invite the players to approach and handle the fire giant problem directly. Now, our players have had lots of interaction with fire giants up until this point. They are familiar with their lethality as well as their fighting tactics. And this is an opportunity to stay in the region and continue exploring and go onward and upward and deal with the threat. Now, some questions to ask myself. Why did the players choose to go to Citadel Felbar and then eventually follow through with the task to handle the Forge of the Fire Giants? I think that answer is found in essentially the weight associated with each adventure hook that they've been provided. First and foremost, the party is nearest to their adventure hooks that lead them to Citadel Felbar, so it is the shortest distance to travel to hit the next major point of the story. And with the recent discovery of the teleportation circles, 
my players know that they can quickly travel throughout the Savage Frontier as long as they have access to the teleportation network. They're friends with the Harpers now, so they have that going for them. Let's examine the hooks that they currently have. Citadel Felbar has promise of receiving a major quest reward for work previously done within the campaign. It is currently the only remaining story hook in the eastern region of the Savage Frontier before they start heading back west. Logically, our players want to make sure that they finish the story threads they have within the region before they begin to trek westward. However, Harshnag has been a good ally to them and has let them know and inform them that time is of the essence. One player has a major personal quest that has been ongoing for the entire year that requires him to travel back west. The rest of the party would like to investigate the fire giants as the dwarves that live in Citadel Felbar have promised them a stronghold and a garrison of dwarves should they slay the fire giant duke. The players decided to take it to a vote. The majority of the players would like to stay in the region and begin investigating the fire giants, understanding that they have a high possibility of failure. However, the promise of a powerful ally being made in the king of the dwarves that lives in Citadel Felbar and their own private army of shield dwarves is incentive enough to undergo the dangerous trek ahead. They decide to formulate a plan to sneak into the forge, assassinate the duke, and bring his head back to the king and queen at Citadel Felbar, and to also assist the dwarves in some of the other dilemmas that they have undergoing. You recall I mentioned that each shot of a movie is impacted by the shot that comes before it and after it. Likewise, that's what happens with these adventure encounters. The social encounters in Citadel Felbar introduce new threads. There are issues going on with the dwarven leaders of the Savage Frontier, and the party has been introduced to these. Other citadels and dwarven strongholds are undergoing threats not only from giants, but also threats from the Underdark. This loops us back into our super campaign of Out of the Abyss, as well as keeping us within Storm King's Thunder. When the players reached the location, they had existing hooks that brought them there, but they also picked up new threads to follow. It became obvious that the players were going to choose to go after the Duke. I started preliminary preparation for the Forge of the Fire Giants, and it was apparent that we'd have to begin the start of the adventure. Segment that involved locating the Fire Giant stronghold, gaining access, exploring and delving the dungeon inside, and having an encounter with the Duke. There were a variety of story threads that the players had not yet encountered that might give them more clarity and a clearer objective and goal to accomplish within the dungeon. However, they had been incentivized by the dwarven leaders of the area that the fire giants must be dealt with, and that was the only hook they had going into it. Outside of their past interactions with the fire giants and a basic understanding of what the giants were attempting to accomplish. The next video, part three of this series of seven parts, will involve my actual dungeon prep work. The actual work that I've done to figure out how to run the Forge of the Fire Giants. I felt it was important for the first two videos to identify how character composition in party and group dynamics impact the game. And in the second video, I felt it was important to discuss how the sandbox nature of a campaign can impact your prep. Some things to think about when prepping a sandbox campaign is the starting location for each adventure session and the potential locations where the adventure might end up. If you are attempting to lead your characters to a specific point of interest, it's important to weight the hooks in a manner that will lead them there. There has to be an incentive for players to go down a path that you would prefer them to pursue. Had my players chosen not to go after the Forge of the Fire Giants, I would have been perfectly okay with it. I had done prep work on other potential paths and threads that they might follow, but ultimately, the agency and decision was left up to them. In summary, and as you look at your own campaign and you prepare each adventure session, focus on your starting location. How did your players get there? What led them there? And then look at the possibilities that lay before them. Where might they go? They are most likely, unless you are running a campaign on tighter rails than a sandbox campaign, going to have multiple options. Which option do you feel that they are most likely to go down? Focus your preparation on that one. However, make sure that you remain open and flexible to the ever-adapting and ever-changing nature of your players. Think about the NPCs that they might meet at the various locations 
and also the NPCs that have major impact on your campaign and what they will be doing while your player characters pursue a potential path. Keep the world moving and evolving, but while focusing on the task at hand. The next video discusses an analysis of the Forge of the Fire Giants itself and how I approach the actual dungeon and how I phased and staged out my prep. It will include dungeon master aids that I found online, discussing resources I use to adapt flavor text to the dungeon, and also analyzing the makeup of hostile creatures that would be found in and around and throughout the dungeon.